as a spiritual entrepreneur, you know your ability to contribute, to make a difference, to build a business comes down to your amount of energy that you can call upon. But with so many different tips, tools, strategies out there, how do you know which ones suit you? How do you know which ones work and which ones are going to give you that vital edge? Well, of course, I have a community, The Serving Circle, that's filled with entrepreneurs who have their expertise in health and, of course, in their vitality. And so what I thought I'd do is combine the knowledge of a few people. We've got about seven entrepreneurs here who I called upon to ask about what's their number one tips, what are the number one strategies and tools that you can implement so that you can just have that little bit more extra oomph in your entrepreneurial journey and of course the vitality and energy that you can provide for you, your audience and your clients. So I will put uh, the links to all of the contributors here down below so feel free to connect with them and pick a few strategies that you think will be able to give you that edge and just allow you to contribute a little bit more. So yes, it's here and of course in the Serving Circle on Facebook where you help elevate the consciousness of the planet to the success of your spiritual business. So if you are a spiritual entrepreneur, be sure to subscribe. Of course, support the content. We love when you do so. And I'll see you in Facebook in the Serving Circle where you can start collaborating with your soul tribe. Let's dive in. When it comes to my own journey, my own health journey, uh, it sort of is a, a up and down, an up and down phase of learning what works and what doesn't work. Because when um, I'm learning about diet and exercise and, and what to do, there are a million different um, there are a million different pieces of advice and and expertise out there that contradict each other. But it's super important on the entrepreneurial journey to be clear, to be healthy, to have the energy so that I can serve in a way that I'm called to. And that's what we're all here for. We're all here to have some kind of energy output. And if your system, whether it's energetically or emotionally or spiritually, if it's, if it's not functioning in a way that allows for that energy, then your output is limited. Your output is not as efficient as it could be. So mastering the things around exercise or sleep or diet or just healthy habits along the way um, can benefit you immensely. The ripple effect that a healthy lifestyle can have is infinite. So it's really cool to have all of you uh, here to give some tips, tricks, expertise and guidance on what are the small ways in which someone can implement, uh, you know, just a, just a small amount of shifts in their diet, shifts in their sleep, shifts in their, uh, in their healthy habits. So they can go out and serve in a way that is their, that is their highest. So I'm not too sure of the format we're going to do here, but if you do have some, if you do have some guidance or some expertise and you want to rattle off for the, for three or four minutes, something that we can really take away and that would be cool. So show of hands, who's here, who wants to give some tips, some tricks, some advice, who's, who's up. All right, cool. Um, hands, let's go with you first. What do you have for us as something we can all take away from each from this, uh, from the health? The, I think the important thing is not to get overwhelmed and to keep it simple. And you just pointed out Tyson is when you start looking at all of the diet recommendations, you know, it, 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 becomes, it becomes overwhelming and disempowering. And, um, you know, I've, I have a PhD, so basically I can pilot high and deep and, and uh, while, I'm, while I'm poor, hungry, and desperate. So if I want to keep it simple, it really comes back to you. If you eat right and keep fit and sleep well, you will likely live long and die quick. The question and the problem that we see is we all feel fine right up to the point that they crack open our chest for the triple bypass surgery. And that's, that's difficult. So what we do need 
is an objective <clears throat> measure, holistic measure, of where we sit on that continuum of fine to let us know that we're truly nourishing ourselves. And, and I'm talking about nourishing mind, body, and spirit, because if you're not giving your brain the chemicals to make the happy soup, you're going to be depressed. <laughs> so, it, so and, and, I, and it's your countryman, Mark Bartlett, who sort of been my mentor in this world. And he said it very simple. It is truly amazing what the human body and its immune system can do when provided of all the nutritional building blocks that it needs. So are you providing? And if you look at life as a, you know, I think it was Agatha Christie I said, life is a physics experiment with biochemical reactions. So how are you treating your biochemistry? That's that's really the, the bottom line, and and um, find someone you can trust that have products that you can trust because the devolution of our food system means that we are likely not nutritionally complete with even a healthy diet. <clears throat> that there is a way that there, there will be a need to supplement and fill the gap. You know, in, in, in the London Underground, they, they encourage you to mind the gap. So I would encourage you to mind the gap, measure that nutritional gap that you have and fill it. Um, so anyway, that's hopefully that's somewhat useful. Awesome. Definitely find someone that you can trust and keep it simple. Just keep it simple. If you if you're doing the same things. Every day that look after you, you, you keeping fit, you sleeping well, you, you know your your diet, your diet's nour nourishing you in a way that gives you the, uh, you know the effectiveness of your body. Then you're keeping it simple every day. That's awesome stuff. Leslie Sack, we haven't heard from you yet. What sort of things do you have here for us? That say uh, tip, tape, take away something we can have on board that's helping us with our health. Well, I'm always the body heart centered person. And so the main thing that I always start with, I, I teach people with Parkinson's and things like that and seniors. And I teach ballroom dance usually as, as my way to get in there to get people to connect. But before we connect with each other, and I just love to teach postural alignment, which is does not sound sexy, but it just changes everything and so the thing that i have everybody do that we can do together <laughs> is the magical heart lift so you ready you got to do it with me you get your arms up that lifts your heart and you'll notice that your head will come up with your heart lift and then you find your back muscles you do that so you find your lats and then you bring your elbows in front of you and if there's this little sweet spot where you can feel your stomach muscles connect can you feel that it's, it's kind of tricky it's just you'll have to find it for yourself but the reason that let's re, let's review <laughs> heart up three parts heart lift back muscles elbows in front for the stomach so the whole idea is that you create this sustained heart lift you're trying to lift your heart all day long but it's the it's the stomach coming up and the muscles these coming down so it's all so you're connected from the inside out and then you can breathe easier everything all these other things happen if you just i never tell people what to do with their shoulders or what to do with anything else i just say i teach them that three-part thing and then it actually just i mean you know i can teach people other exercises i'm a postural alignment specialist too but um um, just to have something that everybody can make use of every day, all day long, whether we're seated, whether we're standing. And, and then we're just moving from the heart and less from the head, and, um, but in a mindful way. So that's my, that's my favorite body heart tip. That Awesome. I love hey, let, me, let me give a review for those who are, if people are just listening on the podcast and can't see you, let me give it a description of what you just did. So hands right up in the air above your head then bringing the elbows down almost like a flexing your biceps kind of pose 
and then bringing the elbows just out in front until it until it activates your core and then this is the sort of thing that's going to give you a, a new posture alignment because if you if your if your posture is great then things are flowing I, have I got it right there, Leslie? That was beautiful. I, I think of the lats, though, not so much the biceps, but but that was a very good description. Yes. Okay. So the whole idea of bringing your elbows down is you find your back muscles, which most people yeah. are not using. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Beautiful. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. Okay. Lynn Cook, what do you got for us? What's a tip, strategy, tool people can take on board to elevate their health? Uh, you know, I we're in a place in time where we know more about how to be healthy than we've ever known, and we are more unhealthy than we've ever been as a society. And the you know, I, everything that has been said so far is is so on point. Um, and I think really the mindfulness piece of every diet of every hydration of every cleanse of of all of those things i I think it really is when you reach for something because it's 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 what we eat it's what we're putting in and just like hans was talking about you you have to have the basic nutrients to build neurotransmitters you have to have the things to to build on a molecular level to create your mental health uh, so that the brain works as it's supposed to and, and gives us everything that we need and keeps us from being um, you know, depressed and everything else. So what is the disconnect? If we know we need this many grams of protein and we know we need this, this amount of vegetables and we need to supplement because of the way our, our food supply is now, it's not the same as it was 50 years ago. Uh, so we do need to supplement all of those things. So where is the disconnect? And I think that's only can be found by, through mindfulness, through every person um, being becoming aware of what is making you hungry. Why are you reaching for sugar or salt when you probably need water? You know, what what is the reason for the choice that you're making? And if we can tap into that and reflect at the end of the day, you know, if you're having health challenges, reflect at the end of the day, at what point were you dissatisfied with something going on? And what did you choose to do to make yourself feel better? Did you reach for alcohol? Did you reach for something that, that you don't really need? And I think if, you, if we can make that connection, we've got all the information out there, like you were saying, uh, and has been mentioned, find the person that you trust. Um, that person may not be your medical doctor because they may not have the knowledge on everything nutritionally that you need because most doctors, you know, quite honestly don't get the level of education on, on overall nutrition that they do on fixing problems so it goes back to prevention so i would just say the the mindfulness piece um, may be the connection that a lot of people need beautiful awesome stuff there jan what do you got for us well taking off of lens i think my um inherent thread of unwellness is I think you can exercise, you can sleep, you can eat, you can even well, and you can even drink. But I think that the one core thing that seems to be the ill of all issues is stress. And I think that unless we can cope or manage our stress levels, the, you know, then the rest of it is kind of moot. Um, in my opinion. So I can tell you that one thing, and I always tell people, I gave up watching the news in the 1980s. Um, I always tell my friends, if anything important really happens, um, please let me know, because I probably won't. Um, Because I think that that constant bombardment of negativity and fear is probably one of the most detrimental things to our health that can be around. And so one of my suggestions is one, 
Um, if you can find a mindfulness practice, um, do something you love, get outside, get out in nature, um, focus on your breathing. I mean, I'm also a yoga teacher, so a lot of breath work, learning to breathe. And then when I say, you know, doing something joyful, I mean, for me, it's spending time with my pets, you know, the other half of what I do, you know, and taking, taking a lot of um, information from them, you know, they know how to live. They know how to like, they know how to play, they know how to eat, and they know how to be in the present moment. Beautiful. Thanks, Jan. All said. Paylin, what do you got for us? Yeah, I appreciate everyone's uh, points so far. It's pretty much all covered. Um, to me, I think just going back to the basics, you know, whenever people ask me, what should we eat? I mean, there's so many different information out there. And to me, I've seen people, for example, reverse diabetes with ketogenic diet, low carb, vegan, whatever diet, you name it, the people succeed in reversing their diseases. So the point eventually will go back to which one fits you the most. If there's no right or wrong diet, only the one that fits you and that you can sustain you, you know, energetically and physically. Um, the other thing I would like to say is that we really need to trust the body uh, because we are so, most of us are so conditioned and taught that whenever we feel the discomfort, we have any kind of symptom, we need to treat it. We need to make the symptoms go away. The truth is that our body can heal if you give it the right support. And so getting that uh, right support is more important than treating it because most, most often, often that when people try to treat it, it actually kind of suppress the symptom. It doesn't matter what they do. If they want to treat it, they suppress it, even though it could be from the natural health you know, practice. It still just suppresses the symptom. Um, so that's something I would like to people to be more mindful. And the other thing is that I think Biochemistry is very important. That's when we think about the uh, nutrient and nutrition part. Uh, I grew up in a culture where we look at food from a very energetic point of view. And to me, as a bioenergetic health practitioner too, I know that the energy is the driving force of chemistry. So if we want to be, you know, uh, really nourishing our body, we would need to really focus on the soil because that's where we get the nutrients from food. If the soil is not good, it's so, um, you know, de uh, degenerated, there's no way we can grow a, you know, uh, food that's full of energy. So I, I would like to bring that attention to everyone here too. I think soil is very important. And I work with food with very high vibrational um, energy that's grown in uh, regenerative health soil. And I think that's that's very important to, to the health to everyone, especially in the future generation, because now only 1% of the soil uh, in the United States is clean. And pure and the rest of it all pretty much all contaminated and full of glyphosate which is the main ingredients in the roundup um so yeah that's all i have to say thank you i learned insightful things there leslie peters hanging out there patiently yeah i'm trying to figure out how to say the important stuff in three minutes so okay the first part of what i'm is um, actually quickly what happens in the body when uh, our stress, because stress is the key to all of this. And what we don't realize though is that our health starts at birth, right? So we might be battling things now that were brought on when we were a kid, even in the body. And, and this is evidence-based I'm talking about, but what happens is for some reason, when you don't feel emotionally and physically unsafe, I mean, if you don't feel emotionally and physically safe, real or perceived, your body goes into fight, fight or freeze. Some degree kicks off cortisol. Cortisol causes inflammation. And if you're not feeling safe when you're a kid, you know, whether it's bullying, abuse, doesn't matter. But 
that you're constantly in that state of fight, flight, or freeze, high alert. And so over time, inflammation is just, you got too much cortisol going on and it impacts things like brain health, um, joint health, diabetes, cancer, you know, like if you ever, autoimmune diseases, big ones are like migraines, GI and autoimmunes and fibromyalgia. But, you know, so you say, okay, let's take a look at, at, at our health and, and what's causing it going back to when we were a kid. And the way that I emotionally healed from my traumas very early on by giving others who I needed the love and love is extremely powerful. I have tons of health issues that most of my life were never an issue. And when I go to the doctors, they're like, wow, you're perfectly healthy. I didn't eat right. I didn't do any of that stuff. That I'm not advising people to do that. But what I'm saying is that when the one thing I did have was I could see myself, the authenticity. I wasn't wearing the armor. So I was very in tune with myself, my body, um, and others. And the authenticity led to what they call heart and brain coherence and that heart and brain coherence is what allowed me to walk through the world feeling safe anywhere I went and developing immediate safe spaces and in the conversations with people and that feeling of oneness and getting back to feeling of oneness allowed my body to do what it needed to do to to heal and to work properly um and so i'm telling you this because in the past couple of years i took away everything i did my whole life primarily the feeling of oneness the giving others the, you know i kind of isolated and in that time nothing else changed with what i put into my body what i worked out none of that changed everything, my endocrine system, my neurological, my cognitive, everything tanked. And so I'm looking at this going, it is the power of love. It's that heart and brain coherence, which by the way, it's 40 Hertz is where it works best. But when you're in heart and brain coherence, that's when your brain and your heart are working together because our heart is the second brain, right? And when the heart and brain work together, they also work to maintain a homeostasis within the body, but they also connect with the energy around you. And it's uh, it sounds so simple, but all of what I'm talking about, if you don't see yourself, if you can't feel safe with yourself, if we're hiding every day, we're not feeling safe because we don't feel safe with ourselves. And so all the great things are out there, all the programs I look, I'm thinking, they're not working because we're not really seeing ourselves. And so I, so I think authenticity and love and love in my world, like I'm not talking intimate love. I always say it's just like um, listening with objectivity and vulnerability to empower. And that comes with ourselves first. And once we do that with ourselves, it automatically pours out to everyone who's around us. And that's where you get that feeling of oneness. And so, I mean, I, during COVID and stuff, I live by myself and I, I, I use myself as a guinea pig <laughs> and it was, you know, it was, it's been challenging, but I found myself in those times not going, oh God, I need to be loved. I went, oh my God, I need to give love. And so a quick takeaway right from now that every one of us could do is something I started when I was two and I used to just put my hand on my heart. And I didn't remember this from two. In the past couple of years, I went way deep spiritually and I started a process of writing myself and all this stuff came out, right? But I put my hand on my heart and I would just breathe in and hold your belly, like, because you're activating the vagus nerve. So you kind of breathe in, but tense your abs at the same time and just go, I am safe. I got you, babe. I got you. I'm safe. And then I would just, I had an affirmation this back in 62 and I'm going, the world's a loving accepting place, the world's a loving accepting place. And that way I practice connection with the heart, you know? Um, and when I would think the world's an accepting place, I try to 
push the energy out on the heart, which allows us to like actually open back up again and utilize the energy of our heart and our brain and our body. So go. thanks. No that problem. was long. No, I that's, call. that's, it, it's exactly what we need to hear. As soon as we come back to love and as soon as we have that, you know, the heart brain coherence, then magical things start to happen. You start to welcome that in your life with the energy around you as well. It's an awesome reminder. Courtney, what do you have for us? What's a tip strategy takeaway <laughs> that us as entrepreneurs can take on board for the more output of energy that we'd like to have? Yeah. So I'm an exercise physiologist by education and the exercise part of me just really wants to mention that exercise is a really wonderful, brilliant way to create space in your mind and your body to relax, ironically, <laughs> um, and just to, to start to feel better and to de-stress. And anything is better than nothing. You don't have to do a fancy workout. You don't have to do a crazy hit thing. You can go for a walk. It can be super simple. It can be yoga. It, it can literally just be anything where you're moving your body and it doesn't have to be anything crazy. In fact, if you're getting started, I recommend that it isn't something crazy. It's just something manageable that you can start to create a routine around if at all possible. But another thing that came up this week and I think is really pertinent and kind of ties in with a lot of what everybody else is saying is that go, go, go mentality and needing to turn the focus a little bit more on mental health and emotional well-being. One, one conversation I had this week um, circled around somebody saying, my brain just doesn't work anymore. I can't remember anything. My brain just doesn't work anymore. And of course, we kind of want to stop the narrative of saying our brain doesn't work anymore because then our brain is just going to be like, okay, I don't work. <laughs> um, but I think people are getting locked into this, my brain doesn't work, or as the neurodivergence is coming out, which is a really great, wonderful, brilliant thing. I think there's also a shadow there where some of what people might be thinking is a neurodivergent experience, and in a way it may be, um, is actually stress overloading our minds and our bodies. And while obviously some of it is neurological, biological, and it's a totally different thing, I think the waters are getting muddied a little bit. And it can kind of send some of us into a little bit of a panic of, oh, is there something I, I'm wrong with me? Or, oh, I, do I need to surmount another kind of health concern? And in a way, yes, but not the same way that I think a lot of people are starting to, to fall into a trap of. And just a little bit of mindfulness throughout the day can really, really help ground you and really, really help you realize that, I mean, sure, there might be another type of underlying health concern that you need to address. But first and foremost, if you can just pause, and for this particular person, she runs around in the car all day. And I said, okay, so just for today, just every single time you park your car, turn it off. It just take three deep breaths, nothing special, nothing fancy. Just turn your car off. And instead of flinging your door open as fast as you can, just take three deep breaths and then walk into the store, the appointment, the office, the house, whatever it is. And then when you come back to get in your car again, before you turn it on, when you're changing that space, just take three deep breaths, just nice and slow doesn't have to be anything special and at the end of your day when you get home you turn your car off and before you enter the chaos of your home and your kids and your dogs just turn your car off and just take those three deep breaths and this is a way that we can start to enter meditation and pranayama into somebody's life without actually saying the words and potentially triggering triggering a oh my gosh, I'm everything to do response, or I don't know how to do that, or meditation is so hard, my mind wanders, and I just can't. And these little things add up throughout the day. And if you just do those three deep breaths, every time you're changing spaces, especially car rides, 
you are centering and grounding yourself, your nervous system, oxygenating your brain, and just really, really turning your whole day around. Um, so that was something that I thought was really, really pertinent and helpful in, you know, just even in these last few months or years where we can say, okay, you know what, actually, I do have some control over this situation. And here's one tiny little way where I can start to take it and then maintain it. Beautiful. Awesome. It's okay. This all seems super simple. <laughs> I think for anyone who's listening, watching, wherever you're paying attention to here, I mean, take on board just the couple of things that you know you feel called to, just a couple of things that you know that if you're to implement this slowly, it'll build this ripple effect of more harmony, more love, more health, more vitality. Because as soon as we prioritize that, we can actually do what we're here to do. We can do, we have the energy to execute what we feel called to, um, to create in the world. And we can serve from that place that we know we can. So thank you for everyone here. Um, I will put all your links in the, in the show notes and in the description and everything like that. So everyone who's listening can reach out to you guys and add you to their network and make sure that, uh, make sure their, uh, their health is the priority, all right? If you don't have your health, you don't have a whole lot. Hans, you got your hand raised. If any anything else you want to add before we uh, quickly, I, I really, I really agree with what Lynn was saying, and I really want to uh, put on your radar the fireside chat on Saturdays. You're all most welcome to attend uh, and just bring that energy that you have. I think uh, I think Jan will agree that uh, this would definitely be a welcome addition to that conversation to um, create a world that's nourished in mind and body and spirit. <laughs> Make sure you're all connecting guys because our networks are what create this ripple effect. So jump in everyone's networks, support each other, support the message, and we can do what we can to make this world a bit more, bit more healthy, one person at a time. Um, that's all we got time for. But for those of you who are listening, definitely see what you can implement. Implement something here, transform your life, and make sure you reach out to these people. If you guys want to unmute and say goodbye, I'll see you guys next time. Okay. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, everyone. So nice to meet you. Bye. Bye.